Welcome to the vignette What Variables to Code. On MetaLab, we provide templates for coding variables. In order to use the MetaLab infrastructure to later automatically calculate effect sizes or visualize your data from your entries, you have to stick to this template. But otherwise, you can consider it an example. Let's take a brief look at the MetaLab template. It is important to know that there are mandatory columns needed for compatibility with MetaLab, but you can add as many optional columns as you need. Let's briefly zoom in. You see that there are a lot of fields, but they are there to help you. We will discuss them in turn. Each of the columns in the template has a specific meaning and some can only be filled with a limited number of possibilities or only take numbers. This is so we can automatically add the information to MetaLab. We added a codebook to the template so you can keep track of the mandatory fields and the optional ones you might want to add. There are four main groups of variables that you should code. Paper study descriptors, all information necessary to compute effect sizes, domain-specific common variables, topic-specific variables. We will describe them in detail in a second. Of course, you need information about the source document. We record a full citation and a short title. We also code whether or not the paper or conference proceedings paper was peer-reviewed in a simple yes-no way. Most papers contain several experiments. We want to make sure we find the experiment again when rereading the paper, so you use the same numbers as the authors. Sometimes there will be just one experiment and multiple conditions within it, such as multiple age groups being tested. In our previous example, experiment number and condition match up. So let's look at another paper. Here, multiple age groups are tested in experiment 1 and 2, and they are all independent results, so they all need to be entered in a new row. Since we also want to keep track of why there are three rows for experiment 1 and 2 each, we add the condition. Sometimes, the same infants are tested in several experiments or conditions. The data is then not independent, and we want to enter this information later in our statistical models. We therefore add a column coding whether infants belong to the same group. In this example, infants were tested in two conditions. We can code this with numbers or a string. The label just has to be the same when the same infants are tested and different when this is not the case. The next important bit of information concerns methods. Note that these descriptors are all standardized in MetaLab. This is so we can conduct analysis over several datasets. It is in any case important to be consistent. Don't sometimes use one abbreviation and sometimes another and even whether you use capitalized letters or not is very important. You might confuse the computer. Here are two examples from three papers. Two use the head turn preference procedure, which we abbreviate as HPP. One uses central fixation, or CF. The response mode is determined by the method, namely either a head turn and thus behavior, or eye movements. But in both cases, we want to measure looking times and this is what is contained in the dependent variable and entered into the statistical analysis of the paper. Since there are many possible dependent variables and methods, we have created an extensive open-ended list of possibilities in MetaLab. Let's take a look at the possibilities for describing studies. We have created a list of possible methods we know people typically use in infant studies and have them coded with their most common abbreviation. You can add methods, but try to make sure it's not already covered by the current list. Now the dependent measure. Here too, there are many options and we try to create a list of everything we have come across so far. It is again possible to add variables, but try to be sure it's really something different from those mentioned here. For completeness, I am listing here the data necessary to compute effect sizes. Check out our vignette, what data do I need to calculate effect sizes for details. In MetaLab, meta-analyses are grouped by domain. One example is infant language acquisition. For the purpose of meta-meta-analysis within such domains, we also want to compare possible moderators. These are variables that might influence the outcome across specific research topics. Obvious candidates are native language and infant age, and whether the infants tested are part of a specific population, such as bilingual infants. In this example, we see that languages are coded with some precision, see for example American and British English. 
This is because infants might learn languages differently across accents and cultures. And in fact, for this specific research topic, some papers have put forward that British babies are delayed in comparison with their American peers. We also code whether infants are tested in their native language, a non-native language, accented speech, or an artificial language. Infant type refers to the group of infants. We consider in language acquisition full-term monolingual infants with no history of delays and disorders to be typical. So we note everything that is different from this type of infants. Finally, we report mean age. We chose to calculate age in days, but all papers vary in how they report age. That explains the uneven numbers. In case age in days is not reported, we calculate it from month by multiplying the number of months with the length of an average month. The final group of variables is specific to your research question. Ask yourself, what might moderate my effect? What is theoretically of interest? Which practical feature of the stimuli is relevant? Examples from word segmentation include whether the target was a content or a function word, the number of syllables, which proportion of words occurred on sentence edges, and so on. A good guideline is to code what is consistently available in the literature. If just one paper reports a certain factor, you won't be able to analyze it. If you can derive information, for example about words occurring at sentence edges, then it might be worth that little extra effort to later be able to answer interesting questions about your research topic. We also recommend coding more rather than less. It is easier to ignore a variable than go back and add it. Now you can go ahead and meta-analyze your data.